particularly happy, even more than anyways, all the time for a special reason to have you back to this, our show, Think Techwise Human Humane Architecture. This happening to be the 312th uh, episode that you're watching. Hopefully you watched from the day one and number one. And this one has to do with these numbers, seven and 10, because that multiplied means 70. And this is a very special twin duo double anniversary show. And me is Martin Despang and you, the Solo Brown. What is that number about that you're very familiar with? Well, I am very excited to say that uh, I just celebrated my 70th birthday. And in the same month of January 2024, the Breakers Hotel in Waikiki celebrated its 70th birthday. So in honor of these two 70th birthday celebrations, we're doing a show about the Breakers Hotel in Waikiki because it's a not only historic hotel from the 1950s, but it also has a lot of aspects to it that we really like and we want to praise it. We've talked about it before, but we're going to talk about it again to let you know how special it is. And um, I personally, as a historian, because that's my job at Bishop Museum, where I am right now, I'm particularly enthusiastic and happy that the Breakers has survived in such good original condition that you can go and visit it and see what a 1950s authentic Hawaiian hotel, Waikiki Hotel, is like. Yeah, and we always try to keep things real, so we want to share that you're almost dripping and exhausted because you rushed to your Bishop Museum workplace and you came from home. We were doing the follow-up show to this one here because this one was supposed to be very special. How can it be any different? Because your birthday, we wanted to do it in your birthday buddy breakers, and we did. And Ethel, the, um, the manager who you see, her business card here somewhere, we let these run through so you get an impression already where we were and what we all saw. And to prove that we were really there, the little thing that's left from what didn't work, old man's and new technology, speaking about myself, of course, having been the reason, we're going to walk you through in a little video towards the very end. But until then, yes, DeSoto, let's talk about why it is so special, because these days uh, they talk a lot about gray energy, so how you build buildings and then how you operate buildings, and then also that you don't tear buildings down. On all these levels, the breaker is, is an absolute winner because it was built out of wood to begin with. And then um, it stayed around almost unchanged. And it's, it's basically uh, operated in an easy breezy way, as we like to say. So this is really, we also gonna be um, with the students uh, next Monday with Ethel and show them that. And these are not the architectural students, but our additional travel industry management. So this is also not the first time we've been reporting about it. In the very first slides, if you remember, um, we've been show quoting uh, both Think Tech Hawaii and um, Dokomomo shows with our fellow board members, uh, many of them being excited about some of them as Graham Hart having lived in Edwin Bauer's buildings, who's the architect of that one. And then Denby Fawcett did one uh, sort of summarizing all of that about the tragic end of Edwin Bauer, who was then basically lost. No one, he had dementia or Alzheimer's and no one saw him anymore. But uh, that is the only bad note. All the other notes are absolutely great uh, that the building is uh, just uh, as it was in 54. And it just looks just as good as young as happy birthday again, you do. So, <laughs> But let's go into the little specifics, because on Ethel's business card, it looks very vintage, too. She says it's Waikiki's most distinct resort. So now let's definition-wise distinguish between a hotel and resort. What's the difference? Well, a resort is usually described as a place where you can stay on the premises and all these different amenities are offered to you and you don't have to go other places. So what the Breakers offers, first of all, of course, it has a swimming pool. So if you choose not to go to the beach and go swimming in the ocean, you could swim. Secondly, there is a restaurant on the grounds. So there is food available there if you want to buy that. But also the Beachwalk neighborhood that this is located on, the, the, the Beachwalk Street is a quiet street, even though it's in Waikiki. It doesn't have a lot of traffic. 
and it does have convenience stores nearby. So you can purchase food outside very easily with a short walk. In addition, the beach walk contains kitchenettes, and this is an innovation of the 1950s for hotel rooms in Waikiki to have cooking facilities so that, again, you don't have to eat out, you can eat on the premises. And furthermore, amazing, in Waikiki, it has free parking, and there's not a lot of it, but parking in Waikiki is difficult, as everybody who lives here knows, and also in the bigger hotels where there may be a whole parking building, they charge you for parking, and the Breakers doesn't charge for parking. So not only is it a 1950s resort in the way it's designed and the way it still exists, but it still has amenities that other hotels no longer offer for free. Yeah, and let uh, Ethel show this to us. So this is slide 44, and then we can show 43, 42, 41, and 40, 39, Michael, as well, because this is Ethel basically having walked us through and basically demonstrate all that. So not only is the hotel the architect to original, but also its interior, not necessarily the furniture you can move around. It has been changed at some point, but it's also been a while. But we're talking the builds in things. They are fixed and they are still original in, in many of the units. And that's absolutely, it speaks about a time when America was like made in America means I last. Just like Deutsche Wertarbeit means, okay, that's good German stuff that lasts, which is unfortunately in none of our two cultures the case anymore with stuff they manufacture today. So these things are still there. They still work. And uh, they look beautiful. Yeah, that picture, if you can stay on that one, um, we had a chance to check the situation. I was actually not happy with this picture to begin with, but there's always a good thing about everything bad. So the reason that we had the chance to be there made us, you know, check on things more. So what looks like, oh, boo, it's been changed to AC. Yes, because some of the guests require that. That's what they're conditioned to, used to. They want that. But uh, when Ethel's staff led us into the room, uh, the default was, oh, let's switch that machine on. We went there and switched it off immediately. And it was very windy that day. And uh, the curtains were blowing. So I, we looked behind and the, the jealousies are actually still working. They're not only working there, but tell us how they worked in, in, on the other side. Well, the, the, the really dramatic or interesting thing about the Breakers rooms is the rooms that face onto the central open area where the uh, swimming pool is and where you can lounge around on the, on the paved deck, those entire walls are jealousies, and those work perfectly. So you can open, there they are, you can open that entire wall of jealousies up and receive the breezes coming through naturally. And that's what we always say. We love the term easy breezy, meaning you can make use of natural wind and natural air movement, and you don't have to have air conditioning, and you don't have to use electricity, and you don't have to use fossil fuels. You let the natural environment take care of your needs. Absolutely. And go back to the resort definition that it so proudly, rightly so, carries. Um, again, the kitchenettes which um, is what other resorts, by the way, of newer kinds don't have anymore. You need to get out to be ripped off in Waikiki where everything is expensive. While here, you can go and shop somewhere where it's not that expensive and bring it home and cook your own stuff. On top of that, and that would be slide 27 and uh, 28, please, they grow your food. But, uh, <laughs> There is uh, basically um, um, Yusin Guzman, who I met as well. He is, the, as a little kid, he was trained by his father. This is tradition of the hotel to do the landscaping. So Yusin took over and he plants these baby pineapples on your planter trough that we're also very familiar from the Killingsworth body of work. They always do that, integrated vegetation into the balustrade. And here, uh, they are then ripe and ripe when they are to be picked, harvested, and you can do your white toast that you laugh about, rightly so, because that's what we kooky Germans, as you call us. What is a Hawaii toast? 
<laughs> it's a it's a piece of toast. Well, it's a piece of bread that's got what cheese and a slice of pineapple, or does it have ham and cheese on uh, as well? I can't remember. I think it's got all of those, and you toast it, I guess, under a broiler or in a in a microwave, not in a microwave, but under a heat source. <laughs> That's a German delicacy called Hawaiian toast. And so you could you could create that. You could create that right there. Traditional thing, your culture did not know that, did not have that, nor did they have dairy or cows or anything to that extent, right? But no. so it's a purely made up thing by kooky Germans, as you rightly call us, who mid-century were craving for being not in the cold anymore, but in the tropics. And they invented that thing. And these Germans. As you will point out in the follow-up show, you saw an anti-slip warning sign, and they also have it in German. So they come here, they might want to make their Hawaii toast, and they can. And no other glitzy, fancy, uh, expensive. And let's get to that part. Let's go to slide number 53. Not only, and we know all this from, from um, Ethel, who we will then show on slide nine after that, but let's stay on this one here. Um, uh, she also told us that all the staff was basically kept. So sustainability happens on all levels, not just on, you know, building sustainability, operational sustainability, you know, passive system versus active systems, but also social work ethic sustainability. They kept all the staff. She convinced the owner that we get to next um, to basically keep everyone and the rates are not, yeah, and there we see the, the, the woman in red is Ethel, um, the manager, since the beginning of the hotel. And thanks to Ethel, again, all these things are still practiced the way they basically were. And on the previous slide, you saw the room rates, right? They're, they're still pretty moderate, 150 bucks to begin with. Uh, next to it is the, we almost don't want to talk about it because of politics, the, the, the Trump Hotel, Trump International Hotel, the rates started 400 and go to the thousands in an obnoxious way. Well, um, and, and you might let's also- let's point out too that the Trump Hotel name is about to be dropped. So- Oh, wow, great news. Yes, that is great news. And they will be disassociating themselves with Donald Trump. I also want to just point out that when this hotel opened, the rates for a low-cost hotel like this range from five to eight dollars a day. That's how much inflation has occurred in my lifetime. And then people got paid, you know, and then an Apple cost only a fraction of what, so they needed to raise it according to inflation. But it's still, again, an absolute number. Yeah. This is affordable, right? And yes. the next following slides, Michael, um, are going to give us hope that it will continue to be around because while great news about the Trump name dropped, but capital predator or predator capitalism is still going on around it. Uh, there's the, been the very Carlton creeping up on it pretty badly on the other side, on the Malka side. So you might think, well, it might be swallowed up. No, there's hope. Because not the original owner, but the one who bought it fairly early from the original owner, according to Ethel, they are the most, um, um, you know, most famous tea ceremony masters in Japan. And in fact, there is a building that's number 59, which is a tea house they build later on the premise. And they come there and do periodically and do their ceremonies. So... Um, they're in a financial position to not be vulnerable to some indecent uh, offers from anyone. They basically keep it. And it includes the premise around it. And these are the previous slides. If we go back to 57, I make the keyword delicious Japanese chocolate to poke you. Ah, uh, yes. Well, because in this neighborhood, as I said, along Beach Walk, a lot of original buildings are still there. There has been, a lot has been sustained since then, as we've been saying. And in this small building, which is just a short distance away from the Breakers Hotel, there is this high-end Japanese chocolate shop. It's right, it's just to the right in the same building of, the, of what we're looking at right now. And I have made a point to stop there a few times in recent months to pick up some of their special chocolate, which... I believe this is the only place in Hawaii where that particular brand of high-end Japanese chocolate is available by retail. So I make it a point to go down there sometimes and pick up some treats. And it's, it's inclusive because the 
the neighbor of that one is is a more low end or moderately priced little mom and pop store where you can buy a little bit of everything and you can carry that back into your room and even cook with it. That's great. There is also, uh, however, and that's on the slide 60, there is a, a restaurant on there that is now a sushi place. Um, and we heard and we addressed this in the next show and actually show you uh, that uh, we heard there was actually a tiki bar in there, which makes total sense because we're talking Polynesian pup here. That one has is gone and has sort of re directed itself, I guess one can say a couple of blocks further away that we will talk about. So these are all great amenities, you know, and it sounds like we're on the payroll of the hotel. We're not. We have our own employers, Bishop Museum and UH pay. My students pay decently enough, more than decently enough. So no, we're not. This comes from true sympathy. You're a little biased because you're siblings, you know, age-wise. So that's that's fair to say. <laughs> But go back to the very beginning when, when Ethel basically told us that uh, this is how vintage the place is. I mean, Henry J. Kaiser, hardly anyone knows the name anymore, and no one knows that Hawaii Kai is not any Hawaiian name, but comes from Kaiser and, and all other things that we have covered in many previous shows. And she tells us that Henry J. Kaiser was sitting down there and, and saying, hey, this is actually not too bad what I did here. Because he also did the neighboring hotel, which he liked this one here better, and you agree with him. And, and then and he was saying, you know, and actually I like it that much that I'm going to do, you know, stuff like that just over there, which was the Kaiser Hawaiian Village just next door, which is long changed. He sold it to Hilton. You said pretty soon we have to blame him pretty soon after that predator capitalism. But then Hilton basically did entirely different things. They went high rise, as you rightly say. And there's none of that old Hawaii, if that's fair to say, feeling around it anymore. But in this one here, absolutely. Totally. Yeah, and Henry J. Kaiser uh, opened the Hawaiian Village complex in 1955. So when he was able to come and visit the Breakers in 1954, he was already getting started on what he wanted his resort to be. But I think you're absolutely right. It's very likely he was influenced because as he continued to build in the 50s, it looked a lot more like what the Breakers still looks like. But as you also just pointed out, everything that was original to the Hawaiian Village Complex has all been demolished and replaced by newer high-rise buildings. So there's nothing left of all of that. Yeah, yeah. And that would be slide six if we can look back into that uh, quickly here that's going to portray that kind of situation we're sitting there in the previous show in front of that and down there is the, all the other kaiser things that he did but the next slide um i number seven i stole from one of your leading segueing into this shows where you were talking about small uh hotels in waikiki for a docomomo playlist and i took the ride to transform it a little more because i grayscaled even the picture you took recently and i also cropped it a little bit more so it, this is actually looks like these are both historic pictures there are not one is and uh, the other one is contemporary by the soto brown and you also uh, excited about the signage and we should go to that respective slide here that is number where is that where did that go i'm kind of trying to well the the breakers on on its facade uh to the right of its entryway has brass metal lettering or copper or brass metal lettering custom made that say the word it says the word breakers in a script that's the original sign that script sign is original from 70 years ago and that's one of the most remarkable things the breakers has not changed its name and it still has its original sign and again as a historian things like that are very rare it's very uh, it's very unusual to find things that have survived that long and and i'm really I find that wonderful. So that from the point of view of a sustainable architect, because that's true sustainability. Everything else is greenwash, blah, blah, blah. And the turnover of six to seven years, what our exotic escapism expert Susanna tells us every six to seven years, they throw everything out. They do a renovation or remodeling. They resist this and slide 62 and 63. This is how it used to look like. 
And only because of the sort of second skins, how we call clothing, you can identify that this is actually, and of course, because of the stamp and you're a collector of things like that, you know immediately <laughs> this is all, right? But if you just say, you look at the architecture of the third skin and the first skin, which is the skin we were born with, you know, they still look the same. You know, human beings will forever look like with that skin that we have on. And these buildings, you know, they're just timeless. So only the, 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 the wardrobe, so to speak, what people wear, but they're also very easy breezy dress, right? And if we go to the previous slide, number 61, Ethel is kindly um, showing people around. This is, this is our students that you had hosted to uh, last semester at your museum. We've been covering that. So Ethel has been, you know, is welcoming and she's welcoming us next week kindly. She's probably surprised to see a much larger crowd because this was a small studio. Now we got 24 students, but we'll all fit in somewhere. And yeah. um, and again, the legacy is to be continued. That's yeah. just that's just really awesome. Uh, this is, uh, if not our favorite, you know, piece of uh, showing off, you know, to the world that that Polynesian pop um, is basically very profound. You know, and besides all the discussions that we will continue next week about, you know, some issues with uh, sexuality and gender issues and discrimination that some young, you know, females rightly so to feel whatever they feel and how they feel have. But we want to add to that uh, and basically said, well, you know, here, there's really nothing wrong here on, on all levels. Everything is actually really right. And so why not? again celebrating that and that's what we're doing and this very special double dipping birthday so show so happy birthday again to you and to you the breakers and to you the soto and so uh, i think we're at that point to say goodbye but not without walking you around so this is us in real thanks to michael been worked into this here in uh, showing you around and give you a be even better feel and make you go there by yourself and that's right spend spend the weekend there that's you know, right and really staycation the, if you're on oahu feel, have a staycation at the breakers staycation and make your own hawaii toast with houston's pineapple <laughs> bye 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 <laughs>